this video, we'll look at menu button pop-ups for Tkinter. Hey guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com. And a few videos ago, we looked at menu bars. Those are just menus that go at the top of your app. In this video, we wanna look at pop-up menu buttons. And those are similar to menu bars, but they're sort of floating around anywhere you want them in the form of a button that pops up with a menu whenever you click on it. This is useful for all sorts of different things and it should be a lot of fun. But before we get started, be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. So let's learn about menu buttons. Let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Gabash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Intro to Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm calling it menu underscore buttons dot pi. And let's just come down here and create a menu button. So I'm gonna call this my underscore menu. And this is gonna be a menu button. We want to put it in root and we want the text to say something. And let's just have it say, I don't know, file. We really don't care what it says. Uh, that'll be fine. So let's my underscore menu dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 100 to really push it down the screen. So if we save this and run this just right off the bat, head over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash tkinter.com directory. Let's run Python menu underscore buttons dot pi. When we run this, we see this thing that says file. When I click it, nothing happens. It's just like text. There's no button or anything. So that's the default and you can keep it that way if you want. We wanna make it look like a button. So to do that, we can give it a relief of and anything you want. I'm gonna give this raised. So now if we save this and run it, now it looks like a button. It doesn't do anything when we click it yet, but at least it looks like a button now. And it's very small because the word file is very small. We could make this, we could make it bigger if we wanted by, I don't know, let's say file menu, something like that. And here we can use all of the different reliefs that all of the widgets have. And we looked at this a couple of videos ago. There's flat, there is sunken, there's raised, there's a groove, and there's ridge. So if we go groove, I can never remember if it's groove or grooved. So let's just run it and see. Yeah, singular groove. So now it's sort of like sunken a little bit. You know, whatever you like, play around with those to get it to look, you know, however you want. So I'm going to change this back to raised. And there we go. So we've got this thing and it doesn't actually do anything. So in order to do something, we have to define the menu, right? So let's come down here and let's go my underscore menu dot menu. And this my underscore menu, of course, is just whatever we name that. And dot menu, we want to set this equal to a tkinter menu. And we looked at these several videos ago when we looked at menu bars. And here we, we want to designate what menu we want to attach to. Well, we want to attach to this my menu right here. So we'll put that right there. And then we want to give this a tear off of zero. If you watched the video a couple of videos ago when we looked at menu bars, tear off allows us to tear off the menu. And we'll play with this uh, later on, change it to one in order to actually have it tear off. But right now I don't want it to tear off. I just want it to be a regular menu. So, okay, there we go. So now we're not yet done. We also have to go my underscore menu. And with brackets, we need to add a menu and set that equal to my underscore menu dot menu. So here is the first menu, we've defined it, right? Here's the first sort of instance of the menu where we put the text of it. Here we turn it into a menu, right? Called my underscore menu dot menu. And then here we designate that my underscore menu dot menu as our menu. It's weird, right? But this is how you do it. So, okay, now we have a menu we need to now add sub items to our menu. And we do this the same way we did with the menu bar a couple of videos ago. So let's add sub items. And to do that, we call my underscore menu dot menu dot whatever we want. So we can, for instance, add a command. And I'm gonna grab a couple of these. And remember we have, we could do commands, but we can also, if you watch that video on menu bars, we can do add a check button. And we can also add a radio button. And you know, radio buttons are always in groups of one or more. So we can do radio button again. So here we'll have four sub items, right? So let's give this a label of, and we'll have the first one say new, something like that. And again, this is a lowercase L right there. I know these both 
kind of look like uppercase L's. They're lowercase. I always have to say that. There, that's an uppercase L. It's very angular, right? This one is a lowercase L. It's kind of swoopy. So, okay, we can now give this a command if we want. And I'm going to give this a lambda again, like we did in that prior video. And let's call a function called, I don't know, thing. And let's pass in the word new. And I'm going to come right up here. And let's define our thing function. Here we'll pass an item. And for now, we'll just pass. So, okay, I'm going to copy this. And let's just paste it in four more times, but we'll change the label. Uh, this one will say what open, maybe. This one will say save. And this one will say save as. And we want to change the thing we pass to the function as well. We'll pass the word open with this one. We'll pass save with this one. And we'll pass save as with this one. So, okay, now let's come down here and let's just add a label to the app so that we can do something when we click on these in this function up here, right? So I'm just, I'm just gonna call this minor score label. And this is gonna be a label. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing at the beginning. And let's give this a font of, let's go Helvetica. And like, I don't know, size 24, make it nice and big. And then let's minor score label dot pack to pack this on the screen. So now anytime we click one of these things and we pass this into this function, Let's just output it to this label so we can see it do something. So let's go my underscore label dot config. And we want to set the text equal to let's create an F string. And let's say you clicked. And then we'll pass in whatever that item is that we passed in right here, which is whatever these words are over here. So okay, let's go ahead and save this run it head back over to our terminal. So now we've got this file menu and we click it boom, the box pops up or pops down, I guess you should say. And then we can click any of these things. If we click new, it says you click new. That was the command. Open is the checkbox one. You can see there's now a check next to it. Uh, we can also do save. That was a radio button. We can do save as. That was a radio button. They they switch depending on which one you clicked. If we click open, it will stay checked until we uncheck it. Radio buttons obviously toggle back and forth. So I don't know why you would want to use the radio buttons or the check buttons on here, but if you do, that's what you do. Uh, I always just use commands, which is the first one. And there you go. Now this is ridiculous. We're just printing out, you know, the word new or the word open. You're obviously going to do something else with this, whatever you end up wanting to do, you'll just do in this thing function, you'll name it whatever you want, you'll have it do whatever you want. And that's all there is to it. So pretty simple. Now, I mentioned the tear off, we can change this tear off to one. Again, I don't know why anybody would want to do that. But now we see there's this like dotted line. And if we click on that, it tears off the menu. And here it is. Now it's sort of floating around and it still works. We could still click the things. Again, I don't know why you would want to do that, but that's the tear off. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, and that's all there is to it. So I'm going to change this back to zero because that's silly. Now we can also kind of get rid of this thing here. So if we take off our relief, if we save that and run it, what do we have? Well, now we just have text and maybe you want that. Maybe that's exactly what you want. Maybe you don't want it to look like a button. When we click on it, it's still kind of, you, you saw there's a little outline of a button when we click on it, you know, well, whatever, <laughs> but it still works the same, whether you have the relief or not, we can click the things and do the stuff and pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and put that back and that's all there is to it. So those are menu button pop-ups or pop unders, I guess you would call them. Uh, very simple. If you understand menus from a couple of videos ago, this should be super easy. It's the same concepts. We're still adding commands and check buttons. We're defining a menu. It's equally kind of convoluted, but you know, this is sort of all unnecessary weird stuff. I don't know why they set it up this way, but it's not too bad. It's just a couple of lines of code that are kind of confusing, uh, but super easy to use. And that's all there is to it. So in the next video that should show up over here, we'll keep the pop-up theme going and look at pop-up boxes. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com. I'll see you in the next video.